Yo, what is up guys? Dale Boy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button and also hit the like. So, it looks like The Zone is suffering some financial issues right now. Essentially, from what I've been reading online, from various reports, the billionaire owner of The Zone, Len Blavatnik, is essentially exploring options to raise money. Essentially, from selling equity stakes to actually selling the entire company. So, you know, it looks like the zone is obviously suffering during the pandemic. And obviously, the pandemic has played a massive part in that. That has to be said. Ultimately, they are a live streaming sports service and they have nothing to show. So, their subscribers are going down, less and less people are renewing. So, they're going through some problems right now. One of the main problems, obviously, being the fact that they have no other content to offer apart from the live events, and that is something the Zone really need to look at in the future. I've heard from several people in America who say that, you know, apart from the live sport, there's really not much to offer on the Zone. No backup sort of programs, nothing like that, just pure live sport and that's it. So, in an event like this, that's when you need other content to get you through and the zone really don't have that but the zone's biggest problem or their biggest mistake as far as i'm concerned is the overspending that they have done when trying to enter the boxing market i mean they really have paid some extortionate purses for average fighters let's be honest about it you know fighters who can't really draw flies to shit if we're being completely real you know paying someone like jesse vargas a million dollars while he's fighting on an undercard. You know, does Jesse Vargas deserve one million full stop if he's headlining? I mean, come on now. They paid Mikey Garcia seven million dollars to fight Jesse Vargas, and that was a one fight deal. That's a big, big, big purse for a one fight deal. Fair enough if they're trying to entice him into a long contract, but a one fight deal? This is silly money they're throwing around right now, and it's really not sustainable in the long run. It really isn't. I mean, look at the Gennady Golovkin deal. What's his deal worth? $100 million? The guy's 36 years old, and we've still not got a Canelo fight. From what I heard, the guy got paid $14 million to fight Steve Rolls, and he will get something similar to fight Camille Zamoretta. Silly money for these type of fights, and it really isn't sustainable, so there's no wonder DAZN really are struggling financially right now. They've been extremely aggressive in trying to break into the boxing market, they've spent a lot of money, and, you know, now arguably they're paying the price for it, and on top of that, they have no backup content to show in an event like this. What can they show apart from live fight replays? That's all they can really show. So yeah, DAZN are in big, big trouble. And what does this mean for Eddie Hearn? Will his budget get cut going forwards? Is he going to struggle a lot more now in attracting the big fighters to Matchroom USA? Who knows how this will affect Matchroom USA going forwards? I mean, before the pandemic, let's be honest about it, Eddie Hearn was having big, big problems trying to attract big name fighters to join his stable, you know? He went in there extremely arrogant, quoting the money he had available. He said he was going to go after Charlo. Javonta Davis, Adrian Broner, Errol Spence, etc, etc, and he's wound up with none of them. You know, swinging all that money around, but what's he got to show for it? Demetrius Andrade? Tevin Farmer? I mean, come on. Come on. When Eddie got back to zone money, the biggest mistake he made was publicly saying how much he had available, because what that did, in my opinion at least, it made the fighters he was trying to sign a lot more harder to sign because these guys were quoting astronomical fees in order to sign with the zone. And while the zone have thrown a lot of money around, you know, with Canelo, with Golovkin, with Anthony Joshua, there's only so far that money can actually go. And maybe these prices the fighters were quoting in order to sign with the zone, maybe these figures were too high and that's why they missed out on a lot of these guys. I mean, like I said, when Eddie went to America, he was letting his balls hang out, he was talking slick, but really, what's he got to show for it? I mean, the biggest event he's put on the zone is Logan Paul versus KSI, let's be real about it. Let's just be real. And listen, I'm going to go by Eddie Hearn's own words. When Eddie Hearn first went to the zone, he said he wanted to 
get at least one pay-per-view quality card on the zone each month. So he stated Matchstream USA would provide 12 pay-per-view worthy cards in a year on the zone. Let's be real folks, that's not been close to happening. Not been close. Don't get me wrong, Eddie Hearn has put on some good shows in America. For example, the Joshua Ruiz fight in New York. That was a big achievement for Eddie Hearn. And that was a significant fight. So that was a good achievement by Eddie Hearn. But apart from that, what else has he done? Made Logan Paul versus KSI? Don't get me wrong, he's made some good cards as well. Like the card this year, you know, headlined by Demetrius Andrade versus Luke Keeler. Yeah, the main event wasn't great, but the card itself was great. You know, really good card. But that sort of card on paper is not a subscription driver. That's the truth of it. And that's why Eddie Hearn had to put another YouTuber fight on that card in order to shift some subscriptions to the zone. I think Eddie Hearn is realising, you know, promoting in America is a completely different landscape to the UK. It's not easy in the UK, don't get me wrong, but the whole culture in America is completely different. The culture is completely different. You can't replicate what we have in the UK in America. In America, it's not about going out with your mates, railing a few lines of cocaine, having a few beers, and swinging Sweet Caroline. It's not about that in America. It's a completely different audience, it's a completely different culture, and it's a completely different vibe. And I don't think Eddie Hearn has worked out how to tap into that yet, to be honest. And I think he's going to struggle, I really do. Ultimately, when it comes down to Eddie Hearn in America, has the guy been a complete failure? Not in my opinion, no, he hasn't. But has he really succeeded in the fashion he was promising when he first started at the zone? Absolutely not. He's got a lot of work to do, and ultimately he's not lived up to the initial statements he made when he joined the zone. One pay-per-view worthy card per month were his words. And by the way, to the people out there in America who watch this channel, he said similar things to the UK audience as well, and he's not delivered, put it that way, so make of that what you will. Anyway, share your thoughts below. Do you believe the zone is in financial trouble and can they get around it? Me personally, listen, I actually believe rumours. I'm sure they are struggling right now. You know, they have let go of staff. I'm sure people are on furlough, but I think they will get through it. Ultimately, you know, the zone is a worldwide company and they've got a lot of backers behind them, but there is only so long people can keep bleeding money in order to try and make something work. I don't think it's going to go anywhere for the foreseeable future, but certainly the guys at the top will start thinking about how to redistribute the money more evenly and be more cost effective going forwards. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some changes within the zone. Ultimately, I just believe they'll be a bit more shrewd with their money going forwards. That's my opinion, at least, anyway. And as for Eddie Hearn, can he turn things around in America at Matchroom USA and, you know, maybe even become the biggest promoter in America? I've got to be honest, I'm really not sold. I think he's got his work cut out, but we'll see what happens. And interestingly, this whole pandemic has made me realise, if you look in America at all of the promotional companies, so the PBC, Matchroom USA, Golden Boy, Top Rank, really, when you look at it, Top Rank are really the only self-sustainable promoters in the US. Because ultimately, Al Heyman, it's not even his money. So if he stops getting that money, he's screwed. Eddie Hearn is operating on DAZN's money. So again, if Eddie stops receiving DAZN's money and he gets cast aside, expect that man to come back on the first flight to England. And as for Golden Boy, again, yes, they've got the biggest star in the sport right now in Canelo Alvarez. Plus, they've got a couple of good prospects in Ryan Garcia and Virgil Ortiz. But again, there's really not much going on at Golden Boy right now. So, arguably, Top Rank are the most sustainable promoter in the USA. And for me, this whole pandemic has proven they are the leading light in America in terms of promotion. And it really is that simple. Anyway, share your thoughts below. What did you make of this video? Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. I'll be intrigued to hear your thoughts, so share them in the comments below. And um, yeah, apart from that, if you guys could smash the like, it would be much appreciated. And um, you know, once again, if anybody's new here, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Anyway, it's been your boy Delboy. I am out of here.